Uh, we've been talking about this all morning. Time to get a little more perspective. Uh, after there were reports of people having seizures after vaping, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has alerted the public to what's being considered a potential new risk and also calling for people to come forward with any more cases of seizures after vaping that the agency might not know about. So joining me now, I'm happy to have Dr. Kara Patari. She's a neurologist with Bristol Health to try to put some of this into some context. First of all, glad to have you here on the show, Doctor. Thank, Thank you, you for so having much. me. Yeah, a pleasure. Uh, in your opinion, how serious is this FDA notice? I mean, at what stage of alert should we be in from this? Well, right now, it's. I think it's too early to know. There's only 35 reported cases, and there's no clear definitive link. So at this point, we just want people to be aware that it's a possibility, and if they do have a seizure after vaping or using an e-cigarette, I think it's important to report it to your health care provider, um, or there is a portal online for the FDA. Yeah, now 35 reports is small, especially considering the USA. That's also from 2010, I believe, Correct. up yes. until this year. So this makes this very, very small. But is there at least some reason to believe it, 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 they're not completely unrelated? I mean, is there at least a possible causative factor from either too much nicotine or whatever else might be in those vapors? Definitely. Pens? So there are reported cases of nicotine overdoses causing seizures. Yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons why they're being more alert with this because mm -hmm. it is a risk and it is a possibility. Again, we don't want to blow this up too much. 35 cases is still 35 cases, no more, no less. Uh, why don't, while we have you here, let's just talk about seizures in general. I imagine there's a lot of different types. I don't know too, too much about them. Uh, uh, should we talk about the different types of seizures first? Sure. So um, probably one of the most common types of seizures that people know about is called a grand mal seizure. Yes. So that's the type of seizure where you will suddenly start to shake, lose consciousness, foam at the mouth. But what most people don't know is there's hundreds of different types of seizures. So a seizure is actually abnormal electrical activity in the brain and wherever that goes it can cause symptoms. So a person can stare off in space, mm -hmm. be confused, they can shake on only one side of their body. Um, so if someone is having episodes where they're very confused that could also be seizures. Of course I'm a parent of a little one, I've heard of febrile seizures. I think those are brought on by high fevers. Correct, right? correct, yeah. yes. Okay, how dangerous are those compared to, say, a grand mal seizure or any anywhere in the continuum? So having one seizure won't necessarily cause any brain damage. The main problem is injuries during seizures. So mm -hmm. you could hit your head, you could dislocate your shoulder, um, you could fall. So there are a lot of dangers with the seizure itself, but permanent brain damage doesn't happen after just one seizure. So what should people do if they see somebody having a seizure to try to limit those uh, injuries? Okay, so if it's a first-time seizure, you want to call 911. Um, you want to make sure the person's head is in a safe position, so you don't want their body to be around anything sharp or anything they could hit. What you probably want to do is roll them on their side so they can breathe. Um, don't try to stop any shaking movements. Okay. Um, and if the seizure lasts more than three minutes, you definitely want to call 911. Okay, so there you go. In case that ever happens to you that uh, could certainly help out the person who is seizing. Uh, Dr. Patari, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thanks for having Again, me. A pleasure to have you. She's made history the first interview guest in our 10 a.m. hour.